Now let's talk about the accelerators on hair growth and the brakes on hair growth. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Wolfeld. And today I want to review a podcast by Dr. Huberman at Huberman Labs. And he put together a podcast, a really good podcast on the science of hair, the science of healthy hair, the science of regrowing your hair. So he touched upon a lot of different segments and a lot of different topics. So today I'm going to review the segment on minoxidil within his podcast. There are many accelerators on hair growth, but the first one that I really want to underscore is blood flow itself, which equates to the delivery of nutrients and oxygen. This is very important and it explains a lot of the treatments for halting and reversing hair loss. For instance, one of the longest standing treatments for halting and reversing hair loss is so-called minoxidil. Minoxidil, sometimes also referred to by the brand name Rogaine, was actually a drug that was developed to treat hypertension. So this is a cardiac drug that lowers blood pressure and it does that by causing vasodilation. It allows more blood flow, not just to the hairs on your scalp, but to hairs everywhere on your body. And indeed, most people don't realize this, but minoxidil won't just slow the loss of hair from your scalp, it is also effective at slowing the loss of hair elsewhere in your body. So minoxidil is a very common medication we use in hair loss uh, to treat hair loss. It is a it comes in a topical form and actually oral form as well. So when he talks about that it can treat hair or help to thicken or regrow hair on other parts of your body as well. That's true, but not so true for the topical form of it. That's more localized, where it works where you really apply it to. So you apply it to your scalp, and it has to get into your scalp. It can't just sit on top of your hair, so it's got to be massaged into your scalp, and that's where it can work. But if you take the oral version, which works systemically, meaning throughout your body, then you may experience hair growth elsewhere on your body as well. And for some people, you know, for some men, that may not be a big deal, but if women take it and they have hair and they're experiencing hair growth in other parts of their body, that may not be so desirable and they may not want to continue. It is uncommon to see that, so that's not a common effect from it, uh, but it's something that should be noted. How does it do that? Well, you now know one of the major ways it does that. It does that by extending the antigen phase. So it basically makes that phase a bit longer. It doesn't make it much, much longer, which is why for most people who are losing their hair quickly or who have already lost their hair, minoxidil alone is not going to be a sufficient treatment. However, minoxidil has been shown to be effective at slowing rates of hair loss in people that are starting to experience some hair loss. I'll get into dosages and things of that sort a little bit later, but right now I just want to really focus on the logic of why people would take this drug, which is lowering hypertension, at all as it relates to hair loss, right? That might seem like kind of crazy until you understand the anatomy and the growth of hairs, which you now do. So that's what minoxidil is doing. It's creating more blood flow to the hairs, which because minoxidil does have this positive effect, at least most people would like to slow their rates of hair loss on their scalp anyway, it tells you that blood flow and delivery of oxygen and other nutrients from the blood is pretty critical if not very critical for the support of the hair growth cycle itself. So that's true. Minoxidil does work by vasodilating, meaning that it helps to increase the size of the blood vessels. So there's more blood flow. And originally it was used to treat hypertension or high blood pressure. So by increasing the size of the blood vessels, there's less pressure within them and that lowers the blood pressure. But that also helps to bring increased blood flow to the hair follicles. And what he's saying is correct. It does bring extra oxygen, extra nutrients, and it helps to increase the antigen or the growth phase of the hair cycle. However, we don't ex really know exactly how that happens. So the exact mechanism of how the increased blood flow and increased nutrients is increasing the growth phase of the hair cycle. That is not completely known, but it does work. It can be effective. Studies back it up. And the topical formulation of minoxidil is FDA approved for hair loss. Now, 
Again, we haven't talked at all about the sorts of chemicals or the signals within the body, such as hormones that actually direct the growth of hairs. Here, we're just talking about a mechanical change, allow more blood flow to the region and thereby extend the antigen phase, which is exactly what happens with minoxidil. Now, minoxidil does have other effects, and this is why dosing of minoxidil becomes a little bit complicated and can be a little bit tricky to troubleshoot. It can greatly lower blood pressure or lower blood pressure just a little bit, depending on how sensitive somebody is to that particular drug. So oftentimes physicians will start people on minoxidil dosages that are very low. Ideally, that would be the case. And then ratchet it up in order to figure out where the minimal effective dose or the kind of critical threshold is beyond which they start experiencing some pretty uncomfortable side effects, such as you know swelling of the ankles or headaches or dizziness. These things can happen with the use of Rogaine, aka minoxidil. Now, those side effects can happen, he's right. They're very unusual, especially with the topical formulations of uh, Minoxidil or Rogaine, which is the brand name. So while there are potential side effects, uh, the most common thing that I may see is irritation of the scalp, especially from the solution. So there's a solution and a foam. The solution has propylene glycol in it, which is a little bit more irritating to the scalp. So that may irritate the scalp. Th that is not... Uh, the, the foam version does not have it, so the foam is a little bit you know, less irritating. However, the solution is probably a little bit more effective than the foam between the two different types of minoxidil or Rogaine. However, these other potential side effects such as um, lightheadedness or swelling, those are quite uncommon uh, with the topical version. With the oral minoxidil, they are still uncommon, but potentially can, can, you could see it a little bit more frequently because it's, it works more systemically, meaning throughout your body. Now, minoxidil has also been associated with increases in the hormone prolactin. Prolactin is a hormone that's released from the pituitary. It is a hormone that acts also as a bit of a neurotransmitter like many hormones, and it tends to be antagonistic or in opposite to dopamine. So dopamine is a neurochemical, it's actually a neuromodulator, meaning it modulates the activity of a bunch of neural circuits in the brain. It also controls the release of various hormones in the body. Dopamine is almost always associated with states of motivation, pursuit, and drive. It has a little bit of a kind of feel-good element to it, which is why a lot of people think dopamine is associated with reward and pleasure, but it's really about energy, motivation, and drive. Dopamine and prolactin are, as I mentioned before, antagonistic to one another. They're in sort of a push-pull. So people who take minoxidil, especially if they're very sensitive to it or they take dosages that are too high, will experience increases in prolactin that in turn can cause things like reductions in libido, reductions in overall feelings of well-being, apathy, and in some cases, where the elevations in prolactin are more extreme, they can experience, uh, for instance, increase in male breast tissue, gynecomastia, or even small bits of milk let down, things of that sort. In women who take minoxidil, the side effects are much like the ones in, experienced in men. So there can be swelling, edema of the tissues, um, because if you get too much vasodilation and too too much lowering of blood pressure, that's not good, headaches, dizziness, and so on. So dosing of minoxidil is really important. If somebody's going to use minoxidil in order to try and slow or reverse hair loss, and again, it mainly is going to be used to slow rates of hair loss, not to actually reverse hair loss. Regarding using minoxidil for hair loss, minoxidil, I do think not only can help to slow the rate of hair loss, but I think it can help to stabilize it so the hair loss doesn't progress, at least for a period of time. It's not going to work forever. But for a period of time, could be a year, could be several years, it can help to stabilize, but it can also help to reverse some of the miniaturization or thinning hair and help to thicken the hair as well. So it can do that. So I think minoxidil can do a little bit more than just what he's referring to in terms of just slowing down uh, the rate of hair loss. Regarding, once again, the side effects uh, and, and the prolactin and the potential uh, sexually related side effects, I've not seen that from minoxidil. Um, not to say that it's, it's not something that potentially can happen, but I've never seen that. I think that's not something that we would uh, commonly uh, discuss or, or have associated with minoxidil. But uh, in terms of the uh, other potential effects, which I mentioned before, in terms of the lightheadedness, edema or swelling of the extremities, um, those also are quite rare, um, especially with the topical formulations of it. 
the oral version, it's possible. However, the oral version, there's different dosages of it. And the higher dosage you go, uh, potentially you may see that a little bit more frequently, but still it's, they're all very rare. The really key thing is to get that dosage right. So the ranges of minoxidil that you'll see suggested and that people use out there are vast. And I should also mention that there are two major routes by which people get minoxidil to the hair follicle. One is to take it systemically as a pill where it goes into the general circulation. The other is to take it topically as a cream. There are prescription and non-prescription forms of minoxidil just to further complicate things. But the ranges of oral minoxidil that you'll see out there and that people take range anywhere from 0.25 milligrams all the way up to five milligrams per day. So that's an enormous range. It's like a 20 fold range. The topical minoxidil is also found in various concentrations. The typical concentration is going to be a 5% concentration that people will use once per day. Topical treatment with minoxidil at 5% concentration is thought to just stay at the scalp, but we now know that it can go systemically. It can get into the general bloodstream. Why that is should make complete sense to you because when you put something on your scalp, I've already told you these little pits, um, these little tubes that go down to those bulb regions uh, below the skin that have direct access to the blood supplies. Uh, that's true. Topical minoxidil can be absorbed systemically, uh, much less so than taking a pill uh, of minoxidil, but it can be. Once again, it's quite uncommon to have systemic effects like you know, rapid heart rate or, or low blood pressure or lightheadedness from the topical formulation of it. Now, the topical solution for men at 5% twice a day is what's FDA approved. For women, there is the 5% foam or 2% solution twice a day, which is what is FDA approved. So when you massage something into your scalp, it not only has the opportunity to get into your general circulation, it often does, especially if it's something that's very water soluble and that way can get into the capillaries and into the general bloodstream. Although topical treatments, of which we're going to discuss a number of them today, don't tend to get into the general circulation as robustly as taking something by way of pill or capsule. Okay, so minoxidil works by way of increasing blood flow to the stem cell niche below the hair. The dosage ranges of the oral minoxidil are tremendous, 0.25 milligrams all the way up to five milligrams once per day. The dosage range of the topical solutions tends to be a little bit more confined. Typically it's a 5% solution and it's recommended that people use it one time daily, maybe twice daily. For the dosage of the oral, first of all, what should be known is that the oral is off label. However, a lot of people use it. There was an article about a, maybe a year ago, maybe a little bit less in the New York Times about oral minoxidil and that got a lot of traction behind it. But a lot of uh, a lot of more people are using it now off label. Um, most common, I feel that the dosage for men is 2.5 milligrams per day, and for women it would be half of that per day. Now I would usually start on an even less dose for the first few months, maybe half of their what their normal dose would be for the first several months, and if there's no issues, no um, problems taking it. Then, then up it to what their their ongoing dosage would be, which for a, for most people would be two point five milligrams for men and one point two five milligrams for women. It's also important, by the way, if you're going to take this route, that you actually leave that solution on the scalp for three to five minutes. This is important and should make complete sense as to why it's important. You can't just rub the stuff into your head and then rinse it off and expect it to be absorbed. It actually needs to seep down into those hair follicles and access the niche. How do people arrive at the correct dosage for minoxidil? Well, for better or for worse, really. In some cases, it's accomplished by finding out that you have an unwanted side effect, like dizziness or swelling of your ankles or edema, or um, I would hope this wouldn't be the case, but something that suggests there's hyperprolactinemia. You could get a blood test to measure your prolactin, or you perhaps notice a drop in libido or some lethargy, uh, these sorts of things that are common to reduce levels of dopamine, increase levels of prolactin. I would hope that if people are working with a physician or if they're not in taking minoxidil, that they would start with the lowest possible dose. Yeah, so that was a good overview of minoxidil. Once again, there's topical formulations, which are generally over the counter. There's oral, which is a prescription. 
There's also topical formulations that can be compounded at a higher percentage. So as long as you don't have any issues taking it, you tolerate it well, there's no side effects, it's not irritating to your scalp, some people take an even higher percentage of the topical, which can have some more effectiveness. What's also important to note is minoxidil works by being converted to its active metabolites when it's used topically in the scalp. And there's an enzyme called sulfotransferase, which converts the minoxidil to its active metabolite for it to be effective. And if the activity in your body of that enzyme is not, uh, you, you know, if you don't have great activity of that enzyme and you can't convert a lot of that minoxidil to its active metabolite, minoxidil may not be that effective for you, but you may not know that until you've been using it for six months or for a year. And that's why we have some people that use minoxidil that have a really nice response and some people that really don't get much of a response. And why is that the case? Well, it may be, it's likely multifactorial, meaning there's many different, there's multiple causes to it, but one such cause is enzyme activity. So now we can actually do a DNA test that can check for your um, enzymes and check for your enzyme activities and whether or not these enzymes are functional in, in you before you start using it. And you'll know beforehand whether or not this may be effective. For instance, if the enzyme, this sulfotransferase enzyme is not very active in you, the minoxidil may not be a great choice. There may be other medical options that may be better for you to start with, and you may want to do it that way. But if, if that enzyme is very active or overactive, and you know you're going to convert it really well, then yeah, minoxidil may, may be effective, the topical version of it. So that's something also to keep in mind. But once again, minoxidil is an effective medication for hair loss. It is an FDA, the topical version is an FDA-approved medication that we use a lot, uh, I recommend a lot and I recommend it to my patients.